demoivrase theorem so how exactly this is going to help us in our solution with this as the induction hypothesis we make the induction step and what is that induction step hello everyone today we will see a connection between trigonometry and complex numbers complex numbers are going to help us analyze trigonometrical equations through de moivre's theorem let's learn it through a problem we will be first starting with the problem and eventually we will be proving the theorem and reaching a conclusion let's get into the video here is the problem that we are going to solve today and through which let's learn some application of complex numbers in trigonometry it's given that a plus b plus c is a multiple of pi and x y z are real numbers such that x sin a plus y sin b plus z sin c equals 0 and similarly x square sin 2a plus y square sin 2b plus z square sin 2c equals 0 we have to now prove the general result for power n and the angle multiplied by n so this might be difficult to handle using expansions of sin n we know the expansion of sin n is a very complicated expression and even the derivation of that is done using complex numbers so in order to analyze this in a better way we need some tool that takes the power of a certain variable to trigonometric multiple of angle and that's where the complex number plays a crucial role let's learn from the basics a complex number is a number of the form a plus ib where i squared is regarded as minus there is a special type of complex number that relates trigonometry with the complex numbers which is known as sis theta what is sis theta it is cos theta plus i sin theta now this is where trigonometry comes into picture and let's look into a beautiful property of sis theta consider sis theta 1 multiplied with sis theta 2 this gives us cos theta 1 plus i sin theta 1 multiplied with cos theta 2 plus i sin theta 2 let's expand the rhs to get cos theta 1 cos theta 2 minus sin theta 1 sin theta 2 minus is as a result of i square plus i times cos theta 1 sin theta 2 plus sin theta 1 cos theta 2 just use distributive law to expand the rhs and you will see that cos theta 1 cos theta 2 minus sin theta 1 sin theta 2 simplifies to cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 angle when added after which the cosine is take plus i times of sin theta 1 plus theta 2 but as per our convention this turns out to be sis theta 1 plus theta 2 because sis theta is nothing but cos theta plus i sin theta. so hence when sis thetas are multiply the result is that the angles are getting added so this is actually very useful result as you will see because multiplication makes it more complex looking right so this is not that complex it's very simple the addition is very simple suppose if you take theta 1 equal to theta 2 equal theta then we get sis theta the whole square equals sis 2 theta now let's multiply sis theta on both sides sis theta and sis theta on both sides and again sis of angles getting multiplied is same as sis of the angles getting added the angles are added inside to get 2 theta plus theta which is 3 theta and sis theta whole square times sis theta is nothing but sis theta raised to the power of 3 so by induction we can easily prove that sis theta whole power n equals sis of n theta and that is something that we want because in the question we know that the raised it to the power because in the question we know that when the power is raised the angle in the sign is getting multiplied by n so this helps in that conversion from exponent to multiplication with n and this is true for all n in natural numbers but actually one can extend this to all n in integers by this simple logic that sis theta into sis minus theta equals sis 0 which is 1 and one can go ahead with integers 
for the value of but let's stick to natural numbers for this question and we call this formula as de moivre's theorem so how exactly this is going to help us in our solution in our solution we need sin theta terms so sin theta can be separated from cis theta by considering its imaginary part that is imaginary part of cis theta equal sin theta and let's use this fact in the question let me paste the question again so here is the question let's assume some basic facts before proceeding with the solution that is let p be equal to x sin a remember that x is a real number or rather i will take p to be okay let's assume p equal to x cis a cis of the angle a so re let's recall that x is a real number and p is a complex number and q equals y cis b and r equals z cis c it's pretty clear according to the question that imaginary part of p plus q plus r equals 0 because its imaginary part is nothing but x sin a plus y sin b plus z sin c and also that imaginary part of p square plus q square plus r square is 0 this is due to de moivre's theorem that when you square p you get x square times cis a the whole square but cis a the whole square is nothing but cis 2a thus you get when imaginary part is separated you get x square sin 2a as a term for p square and similarly y square sin 2b as the term for q square and z square sin 2c as the term for r square thus all of them add up to 0 and that's why we write imaginary part of p square plus q square it's equivalent to saying that p plus q plus r is a real number but let's think about few other expressions pq plus qr plus rp equals p plus q plus r the whole square minus p square plus q square plus r square whole by and if each p plus q plus r and p square plus q square plus r square is a real number then this expression is also a real number thus the imaginary part of pq plus qr plus rp is zero and let's come to the term pqr i will tell you why i am doing all this it will be clear after this step but first let's find p into q into r pqr is nothing but x y z into cis a cis b cis c and this is a cis of a plus b plus c due to the formula that we derived earlier which was cis of theta 1 plus theta 2 equals cis theta 1 multiplied by cis theta 2. and when you have three cis terms all three angles get added up but what is a plus b plus c according to the question it's an integral multiple of pi so thus we get x y z into cis of k pi and cis of k pi evaluates to plus 1 if k is even and minus 1 if k is odd so we get plus or minus x y z but it's real either it's plus or minus since x y z are real the term p q r is real all right let's come to the recursive definition that we are trying to prove think about p power n plus q power n plus r power n. and let's write this in terms of sum of individual powers in as n minus 1 and powers as n minus 2 and n minus 3. so this recurrence would help us to do that p plus q plus r times p power n minus 1 plus q power n minus 1 plus r power n minus 1 minus p q plus q r plus r p times p power n minus 2 plus q power n minus 2 plus r power n minus 2. and then we add the term p q r into p power n minus 3 plus q power n minus 3 plus r power n minus 3 this can be checked just by expanding it this is just like inclusion exclusion we want the terms p power n q power n r power n and thus we multiply p plus q plus r with powers raised to n minus 1 and we get some extra terms so in order to remove that we subtract few terms and again we subtract too much so we add some terms and it ultimately nullify all right so let's use induction here by induction we can assume that p power i plus q power i plus r power i is a real number for all i less than n and with this as the induction hypothesis 
we make the induction step and what is that induction step that this is a real number according to the hypothesis and of course p plus q plus r is a real number as per the question and we also proved that pq plus qr plus rp is real and this is also real by induction hypothesis and same goes for this and we also proved pqr is real this all the numbers are real so they multiply add subtract to give us again a real number so we conclude that p power n plus q power n plus r power n is a real number thus we say that imaginary part of p power n plus q power n plus r power n is zero but what is its imaginary part so let's evaluate p power n p power n is nothing but x power n so say whole power n and by de moivre's theorem so say whole power n can be rewritten as cis na and the same goes for q power n it would be y power n cis n and r power n would be z power n cis nc and what are their imaginary parts it is nothing but x power n sin na plus y power n sin n plus z power n sin nc because we know imaginary part of cis theta is sin theta and thus this evaluates to zero proving our required result though for the induction which was used to prove that imaginary part of p power n plus q power n plus r power n is zero requires the proof for its base cases what are its base cases its base cases are nothing but p plus q plus r is real and p square plus q square plus r square is real and p q plus q q plus r q is real so i would recommend instead of taking p q plus q q plus r q you can rather include p power 0 plus q power 0 plus r power 0 and that is actually 3 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 so it is a real number so all these three are real because the other two are given in the question direct thus base case is very simple for induction and induction step is the important part here so this is a way in which we can invoke complex numbers to solve a trigonometry uh identity and the link for the notes will be available in the description i hope you enjoyed the video we will meet in the next video bye